Now, um, the simple pendulum is a good uh, good approximation. But of course, hindi naman lahat ng bagay point mass. Napaka-idealistic napaka, napaka idealistic ng idea ng point mass. Pero of course, it's a good model. Ngayon, what if there's an arbitrary object that you have? To? Tapos, ang gusto mo lang is mag-oscillate yung hang object. Like for example, a hanger or um, a bato na gusto mo lang mag-oscillate. Paano mo hahanapin yung period of oscillation or I should say period of small oscillations for that particular object? And then you have this same thing called the physical pendulum. Ganun siya minimal model. So, so yan. Pag-uusapan natin ngayon yung physical pendulum. So, let's say for instance, we have a rigid body with some moment of inertia I and then that moment of inertia, uh, that rigid body is hanged um, on this uh, on this point O here which is known as your axis. And then after that, uh, again, so we have a, a, a physical pendulum here. We have a rigid body that is hanging with um, about an axis point O. And then, of course, the center of gravity, of course, uh, for a small rigid body is also equivalent to the center of mass. Uh, weight will act on that center of mass. And let's say that the distance between the pivot and the center of mass is given by D. Okay? Ang tanong ngayon, what is the period of small oscillations for this physical pendulum. So, okay. So, yeah. So, uh, the object can be cannot be approximated obviously as a point mass kasi nga rigid body siya tapos sa loob pa yung axis of rotation mo. So, ang kailangan na nating hanapin, paano natin isi-solve yan? Okay. So, um, now, here, uh, of course, the moment of inertia depends on the axis. So, di ba? Kung saan-saan axis yan, iba-iba uh, magiging value ng moment of inertia mo. Ngayon, ang kailangan nating moment of inertia for this system is the moment of inertia about that pivot and not about the center. So, if for example, given ka ng moment of inertia about the center, use parallel axis theorem to obtain an expression for the moment of inertia about the pivot. Okay? Kailangan mo minsan mag-parallel axis theorem dito. So, medyo magmumulto ulit yan. Okay? Questions? May tanong? May tanong? Wala? Wala. Wala. Okay. Again, D is the distance between the pivot and the center of mass. Now, so, paano natin hahanapin ngayon yung, um, um, yung period of small oscillations? So, again, you can use Newton's second law for rotation and say that the torque exerted by the weight, uh, again, the only forces that are acting here are the are the weight and the ano, and the um, and the, uh, yun lang, wait lang talaga kasi, of course, may normal force na exert yung pivot, kaya hindi um, kaya hindi babagsak or magta-translate yung rigid body kasi nga this will exert a normal force, it will cancel with the weight, and therefore, wala kang um, wala kang nagsum of forces. But may nagsum of torques ka kasi nga mag-oscillate yung object. Hence, from here, we have, um, what we can do is to determine the angular acceleration of the pivot uh due to the weight of the of the rigid body so okay so um d cross mg into the paper now remember pwede ka mag-drawing ng angles dyan. let me extend this length here and this is theta and what i want when we i calculate the torque again is the perpendicular distance so um this theta here tapos ang gusto ko ay itong distance ato this is simply mg sine theta tama Tama? Tama, di ba? MG sine theta lang yan. Yes. So, okay. So in that case, the net sum of all torques will give rise to an angular acceleration alpha. Uh, and therefore, um, we have uh, the, the sum of torques is bakit to, um, this is negative because into the paper, pero yung rotation mo is alpha. And um, therefore, what we have is a similar expression um, with the with uh with a simple pendulum except na may moment of inertia ka nang involved and hence if for small displacement kung napansin niyo may sine theta ulit dito ayaw natin ng sine theta we will only assume uh small oscillations and therefore sine theta is approximately theta and hence this is given by this equation here and therefore we can determine our period of oscillations and of course dito angular frequency makukuha mo na and it turns out that if this is the equation of motion of uh, of uh, of a uh, physical pendulum for small oscillations then the angular frequency is now therefore equal to square root of mgd over i where again the moment of inertia is obtained from the pivot not from the center okay i is about the pivot ip yan hindi yan icm okay bali now so yon, and this is the angular frequency of small oscillations for uh, for a physical pendulum. 
Okay. Then after that, we can also obtain the frequency, which is just um, dividing the angular frequency by 2 pi. So omega over 2 pi here, kaya magkakaroon ka ng 1 over 2 pi dyan, which is your frequency. And then um, from the frequency, you can also determine the period of small oscillations, T, which is equal to 2 pi square root of I over MGB, where again, I is measured from the pivot, and D is the distance between the pivot and the center of mass. Okay? Malino ba to? Clear ba to? Yes. I hope this is clear. So, ganun mag-calculate ng ano. Kung napansin ninyo, para mahanap mo yung period of small oscillations, you need to set up the equation of motion, which is given by this. Diba? May equation of motion ka, tapos kung hindi, ganito yung form, na parang may second derivative ka, equals some constant times that value. Hindi tiha x. Pag hindi ganyan yung form ng equation, kailangan mo mag-approximate. Okay? Ganun mag-compute ng, um, ng mag-solve ng, ng equation of motion at maghanap ng period of small oscillations. Okay? Sige. Questions? So, may questions ba rito? May tanong ba? Wala. Okay.